Alrighty, everybody. Thank you guys for tuning into this episode. Um, as you can see, I'm not in my normal recording place, uh, and I don't have my full setup going here. So, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to uh, move my little picture-in-picture -picture up here in the uh, top right-hand corner to uh, to somewhere else during the video, so that I can go ahead and uh, get through this without any errors. So, I apologize. This will be the last you see of me. Uh, but let's get right into the video. Alrighty, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Um, today I'm going to be breaking down all the prospects in the 2021-2022 Topps UEFA product. Uh, we're going to talk about how it's not looking great right now, um, but there still might be some intriguing options, so I want to go through the full list for you guys today. So um, starting off with the normal disclaimer, no financial advice. These are my own opinions uh, through research. The research I'll admit is limited. I didn't spend hours and hours on this. I just spent a couple hours. So limited research here. I encourage you to challenge me on this and do your own research as well. English is my main language, but any typos or mispronunciations, especially in this video, are because I'm a dumb American. Um, prices, pops, and general information on this topic could change dramatically by the time you see this video. We're looking at a snapshot in time in this video specifically. And again, please do your own additional research. So... This is my tiers list right here. I separated it into five different groups. We have the Gavi and David group at the top, Promising Young Prospects, Lower League Prospects, Complete Mysteries, and then Prospects I Would Avoid. So uh, as a general note here, some defenders and CDMs I didn't feel needed to be out of this list, uh, but those guys will probably end up being the best of the bunch, uh, just how that goes, right? Uh, but yeah, this is how my basic tiers list runs out. Uh, you can see Oh, a bunch of the different guys stack up, but I'll go ahead and take you through each of the tiers one by one. So uh, starting off with Gavi and David, um, they're in a class of their own on this checklist. I think you could strongly argue that Gavi deserves his own tier. He's much younger. Um, David has already had other issues, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if I was making six plus tiers, I would have Gavi in his own tier, but I kept it to five. So uh, Gavi and David are in the top tier here. Um, Gavi, 17 years old, uh, position center mid, plays for Barcelona, Spanish. His transfer market value is sitting at 60 million euros, um, according to transfer market. Uh, two goals, six assists, and 31 matches for Barcelona, and he's already played in six matches for Spain at 17 years old. So I think he's uh, by far ahead of everybody else on the checklist, but of course that means he's probably going to be by far the most expensive. Um, the other key guy on the checklist, I think, in terms of hobby relevancy right now is Jonathan David. 22-year-old um, center forward for Lille, uh, Canadian, already has 20 goals for Canada in just 30 matches, and he had 13 goals in 36 matches for Lille this season. Um, would hope to see better numbers in the next season, or perhaps he gets a transfer to a bigger league with a bigger club. That'd also be really good for his values. So um, these two guys are, are far and away the best two guys in the set right now. Uh, then we'll move into more interesting stuff here. So we'll talk about Tier 2, which I've labeled Promising Young Players, and uh, we'll go from left to right. So here we have Nuno, Nuno Mendes, uh, 19 years old, left back from PSG. Uh, Portuguese international uh, transfer market value currently of 40 million. He has one assist in 26 matches for PSG, and he has played in 13 matches so far for Portugal. Um, there's a scenario in which he starts for Portugal during the World Cup. Obviously, that'd be really nice for his market. Um, he's looked really good for the, the games that I've watched, at least with PSG. He looks like a, a really exciting young player to watch, and Alfonso Davies, but maybe not as involved in the attack, at least for now. So um, I like him, but he is limited in the fact that he is a defender. Uh, down here we have Anthony Alenia, um, probably, again, one of the more popular players in the set, uh, probably really expensive right now. Um, haven't looked too much for his prices just because only the paper product has come out, but um, I figure he's going to be one of the more popular ones just given Man United. But um, Man United, England, 20 years old, plays on the wing. Transfer market value of 15 million, has two goals and two assists in 20 matches for Manchester United. Um, limited involvement there, but again, he's only 20 years old and, and he's been playing some limited minutes, so that's not too bad. Um, for the Swedish U21s, which is the highest level he's played so far for Sweden, uh, he might play a little bit higher, but um, for U21s, um, he had seven goals in eight matches so a good sign there um, for hopefully things to come for Alina in the future moving into the top right we have Brian Bravi um, he's 20 years old a center forward for uh, Leipzig or Ajax he's in this interesting situation where he um, free transferred to Leipzig uh, but then Leipzig gave him back to Ajax after they weren't using him and now Ajax might take him back for the long run so not sure exactly where he's going to end up there this year and the next year but 
it looks like for at least right now he's going to stick with Ajax instead of Leipzig. Um, Netherlands international. He's worth uh, 7.5 million right now in transfer market value. He had six goals and one assist in the um, matches he's played for Ajax. He didn't do anything with uh, with Leipzig, and then he has uh, three goals in seven matches in the Netherlands U21. So um, possibly going to be a key player for Ajax here in the in the near term future, but um, some uncertainty around exactly where he's going to end up. Um, this guy, Benjamin Sesko, probably a lot of people in the hobby already know about him. Um, 18 years old center forward for RB Salzburg, um, Slovenia international, which isn't the best, but, um, what are you going to do about that? Uh, Slovenia international center forward, uh, transfer market value of 8 million, uh, five goals and three assists in 22 matches so far for Salzburg at only 18 years old. Salzburg is just a talent factory. So not surprising there. They also play a really good style of play for scoring goals. So, I would love for these numbers to increase in the future. And he has one goal in nine matches already for the uh, Slovenian senior uh, squad. So um, already played nine matches, already has his first goal, only 18 years old. So lots of like about Sesko in my opinion, but I do worry that his prices are going to be pretty inflated out of the gate just because there aren't really a lot of high-end options um, for prospects in this class. Um, moving forward to the next set of promising young players, we have a name I'm going to completely butcher, um, Martis Kijgard. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely nailed that. Um, 18 years old, attacking midfielder for Salzburg. Uh, Denmark international, he's worth $4 million right now according to Transfer Market. He had two goals and three assists in 15 matches for Salzburg, and I believe he also scored a goal in the Champions League as well. Um, at 18 years old, he's also already played six matches for the Denmark senior squad. So um, a lot to like about uh, Martis as well. Uh, again, that Salzburg talent factory Um Still pumping ahead. Uh, I'll move to the other Salzburg play on the list here, which is uh, Luka Susic. Uh, definitely nailed that pronunciation as well. 19 years old, center mid. Um, he's Croatian international, and he's worth $13.5 million right now, according to Transfer Market. He had seven goals and four assists in 26 matches for Salzburg, which I think is actually really impressive, considering he's a center mid, um, and he's only 19 years old. Uh, Croatian center mid, uh named Luca. Um, <laughs> uh, subjectively, there's a lot to like there, right? Um, he has four goals in four matches for Croatia in U21. So performing really well in the um, younger uh, age group there. So as he makes that jump to the uh, Croatian senior team, it'll be interesting to see if he can keep that up. And I'll be interested to see um, if he can make the uh, squad for the World Cup. So um, interesting for Luca here. Uh, I'm interested, but again, um, all these guys are, are really long shots uh, given their uh, where, where they're at currently in their careers. Um, Tiago Thomas, uh, 19 years old, center forward for Sporting. Nationality is Portugal. This guy is an insane beast in uh, in FIFA for me. Um, going forward in a career mode, he ends up always being one of the top strikers in the world. Probably means nothing, but um, that's how I know him. Uh, his transfer market value right now is $5 million. Uh, four goals in 13 matches in the Bundesliga. He's currently on loan there. And he has uh, one goal in six matches for the Portuguese under-21 team. Moving on to Francisco. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt the last name. Um, August, his age is 19. Uh, his position is right mid. He plays for Porto, and he's Portuguese as well. Uh, his transfer market value is $8 million. He has two goals and two assists in 24 matches for Porto. So as a 19-year-old, um, already having four goal involvements and playing in so many matches is, is usually a really good sign. And he also has uh, three goals in nine matches for Portugal's U21. Uh, you'd hope to see him crack the um, Portuguese uh, senior club or senior squad rather uh, before he turns 21 uh, but we'll go ahead and, and keep monitoring him and see if that gets happened or that gets done sorry moving on to tier three with the lower league prospects here um, first one's Cole Palmer. I labeled him as lower league because that's where the majority of his performances came from. Uh, he's 20 years old, attacking midfielder for Manchester City. Um, he's English, and his transfer market value is currently $3 million. He had eight goals and four assists in eight matches in Premier League 2, and he had two goals and four matches for the England U21 squad. Um, on the same club uh, is uh, James McAtee, uh, age 19, same position, attacking mid. Um, Manchester City as well. England, uh, same market value of $3 million, uh, but his stats are, are a bit more impressive in the uh, Premier League, too. He had 18 goals and 7 assists in 23 matches, and he's played 3 matches in England U20s, so he hasn't um, met the same level of success as Palmer on the uh, national team side, but in Premier League, too, he had a really, a really strong season. Um, Sidney Rybiger, this was a guy I had no idea even existed, but... Um, 
He is 17 center mid for RB Leipzig in Germany. I believe when he started, or not started, when he played for them um, this season, he was their youngest player to ever play. Um, he actually just turned 17. So this is not one of those, he's 17, but he turns 18 in a couple months. No, uh, he actually just turned 17. So um, German international uh, transfer market value of a little bit under a million dollars right now. He had five goals and five assists in 13 matches in the U19 Bundesliga. And he has one goal in seven matches for the Germany U17s. So, um, big wild card here. Um, not a lot to go off of, but he's really young and he's um, already seeing some minutes in the Bundesliga, so that's usually a good sign. Um, down here, uh, Shola Shortire. Shore um, I definitely have heard of this guy. I think he's actually pretty well known in the uh, prospecting game. Uh, he's 18 years old, a winger for Manchester United. Uh, English international worth $3 million according to Transfer Market. He had six goals and eight assists in 22 matches in Premier League 2, and he has not yet scored uh, goals for any of the youth national matches for England. So I believe he's played in U18 and U20, but he hasn't scored yet. Um Obviously, you would expect that to change given his uh, pedigree and what he's done in Premier League 2, but another uh, a long shot at this point. Uh, moving on to the next uh, group of lower league prospects, we have Liam DeLapp, um, 19 years old, center forward for Manchester City. He's English, and his transfer market value is $1 million. He had eight goals and two assists in 10 matches in Premier League 2. Uh, down here we have Mohamed Deremi, which is a, who is a, sorry, 20-year-old uh, forward for Ajax. Uh, his nationality is Denmark, and his transfer market value is $7 million. He has one goal and four assists in nine matches in the Dutch Second Division League, and he had one goal and three assists in, in, in 11 matches in the Dutch League 1, and he's had four matches with the senior Denmark squad, but has yet to score. Um, up here we have Hannibal Mejbri. Uh, 19 years old attacking midfielder for Manchester United. Nationality, he's choosing to represent Tunisia right now, uh, but I imagine if he becomes an even higher level player, he would switch to England, but uh, no insight on that on my end, just an assumption. Uh, his transfer market value is $5 million. He has one goal and two assists in 10 matches in Premier League 2, and he has played in 10-plus matches for the uh, Tunisian national team uh, at the senior level. Uh, down here we have Christopher Scott. He is a 19-year-old attacking midfielder for Bayern Munich. His uh, nationality is German, and his transfer to value is currently 1.2 million. Uh, he has seven goals and six assists in Germany's fourth division, and I believe 20 games. I probably should have put that there, uh, but yeah, um, producing pretty well in terms of the uh, goal contributions, at least in the German fourth division. But obviously, um, he would need to do that at a much higher level to justify um, really investing at this point, in my opinion. So. Then we move on to um, a really fun category here. These these guys I label complete mysteries, and the biggest complete mystery of them all, in my opinion, is uh, Takahiro Nakai. He's an 18-year-old attacking midfielder in Real Madrid's academy system. Um, he's a Japan international, and Transfer Market doesn't even have a value set for him yet. Uh, he has no stats available on Transfer Market either, not even Youth League stats. So your guess is as good as mine as to uh, how well he's been performing for their um academy squads uh i saw on twitter he scored a nice goal in some youth game recently so there's that uh but other than that there's really not a lot of information out there about this guy right now um a little bit more information on uh edward michut uh definitely pronounced that correctly he's a 19 year old attacking midfielder for psg uh french international worth two million dollars according to transfer market he has one assist in four matches for psg with very limited youth stats to go along with that so just not a lot of data points for him right now. Um, he has six matches for France's U19, uh, has yet to score in that. So uh, again, just really limited information on him as well. And then the final complete mystery here is uh, Ismail Garbi. That's definitely a correct pronunciation as well. Uh, 18 years old, attacking midfielder as well for PSG. Uh, French international worth $1 million according to Transfer Market. He has one goal in six youth league matches and one goal in two matches for the France U18. So uh, again, just a guy with very little um, data backing his current performance. So uh, your guess is as good as mine. Maybe you have um, some good scouting reports on him, but um, at least in terms of uh, data and performance, there's just not a lot uh, going on for any of these guys right now. 
Then we'll move into tier five, which is prospects that I would personally avoid for a variety of different reasons. Um, obviously, you could choose to avoid any prospects in the tiers I've been going through. They all have their flaws, but um, these are guys that I thought had some some pretty glaring flaws, at least in my opinion, in terms of uh, why I would not uh, recommend picking them up. So we'll go ahead and start with uh, Martin Satriano. Um he is 21 years old, uh, center forward for Inter. He's a Uruguayan international, and his transfer market value is $4 million. Uh, he's already 21 years old and has no national team appearances at uh, what looked like the senior level or the level below that. So that's not a good sign at 21. Um, and he has three goals in 13 League One matches on loan. So not terrible, but not outstanding. Uh, the problem here is he's already 21, which sounds silly. But when we have 17, 18, and 19-year-olds already performing at really high levels, I don't know how he um, fits into the equation for uh, prospecting. We'll move down to um, Kyle Jorge or George. I'm not exactly sure which pronunciation to use there, but I've definitely heard of this kid before. Um, 20 years old center forward. Uh, he's currently with Juventus and he's a Brazilian uh, international. Transfer market value puts him at about 10 million. Um, the reason I don't like him uh, is because he had just had a major leg injury this year. He might be back in October, uh, but even before then, he wasn't really getting very many minutes for Juve. Uh, so uh, just no idea what to expect if and when he does come back. Um, playing for Santos in Brazil, he had 17 goals in 80 games, so he wasn't exactly lighting the world on fire there either. So I could see him quickly falling out of favor and probably one that I would I would avoid. Um, then we move on to these two players here that are on this list, both because they're 23 years old. Um, this is... Uh, Stefan Teagues, we'll go with that as a pronunciation, uh, center forward for Dortmund in Germany, um, transfer market value 1.5 million. He has nine, three goals in nine matches for Dortmund, uh, and he's already 23 with no clear path to the Dortmund starting 11 or the uh, German squad. So um, he's just got too many other alternatives that are probably going to end up passing him up, so I wouldn't recommend um, Teagues in this case. Um, and then we get to a guy that's uh, a lot better player, but same sort of issue here with um, Pedro Goncalves, uh, 23 years old winger for Sporting. Uh, Portuguese international transfer market has his value at 35 million right now. He had eight goals and eight assists in 26 matches um, for Sporting, which is nice. But the problem here is that he's already 23 and he's only played in two matches for the um, the Portuguese senior squad. So he doesn't really have a path to starting there. And uh, I believe your dream outcome in this case is a Luis Diaz type situation where he transfers to a big club uh, and scores some really important goals and looks really flashy. So um, that's your that's your ultimate dream with a player like this. And, and given the the smaller likelihood that I think applies to him in this case um, and the fact that he's older and you have a lot of alternatives, I, I personally wouldn't recommend um, investing there. Uh, moving on to the next group here, uh, we'll start with Samuel Edoz. Let's go with that. Uh, age 19, position is winger, Manchester City, um, England, international. His transfer market value is half a million, um, and he had two goals and one assist in 12 matches in Premier League 2. Uh, those just aren't very impressive numbers, in my opinion, um, especially as a 19-year-old in, in such a low league. Um, I just see there's, and especially with Manchester City, we went through a bunch of other guys on the list already. There's going to be a lot of talent in front of him, so just don't see how he fits in if those are going to be um, his uh, goal contributions uh, going forward. Um, Nico Gonzalez down here for Barcelona. He's actually fairly popular, I think. Problem here is that he's a he's a center mid and he doesn't really get involved in the attack that often. He had two goals and one assist in 21 matches for Barca, um, and three matches for Spain's U21. Uh, so not a goal scoring threat, and there are too many young Spanish mids, um, Pedri and Gavi, obviously the main two. So I don't know where Nico Gonzalez fits in that picture, especially from a height perspective. So um, probably not um, one to target there, at least in my opinion. And then we have um, Moriba, speaking of another uh, former Barcelona midfielder here. Um, he's worth, according to Transfer Market, $10 million. He didn't score any goals and played really limited minutes for Leipzig this season. Seems really lost in that club right now. He's likely going to need a move to a smaller club and a complete restart to his career after going from Barcelona to Leipzig and now probably a lower club. So that's probably not something I would be on, uh, on board with getting along for the ride on. Uh, I think there's much better options here, so I would avoid him as well. Um, Alejandro Abaldi uh, from 
Barcelona as well. Uh, 18 years old, left back, Spain international, 5 million is the transfer market value. Issue with him is he's a left back that has not shown goal contributions at any level yet, um, not in the second division and not with the Barcelona first team. So um, the fact that he's a defender and the fact that he also doesn't seem to contribute in goal scoring, uh, probably good enough reasons to avoid um, investing in him as well. Uh, moving on to the last three here. Um, this is a guy that I think actually had a decent amount of hype last year, and I never really understood it. Um, this is Yusef Dimmer. Um, he's 18 years old. He's a winger. He's currently with uh, Vienna, um, and that's not a loan move. Uh, Vienna actually owns him at this point. Um, he's Austrian, and his transfer market value is sitting at $8 million. Uh, He had one goal in nine matches in the Austrian Bundesliga, and um, he really missed an opportunity at Barca, so I'm not sure he's going to have a better opportunity than that. It could be tough for him to uh, get a move from Vienna to a, a really top-tier club. So I think there's probably other options, especially if you're looking at uh, 18-year-olds that you could already have that are playing at big clubs or um, or in the development leagues of big clubs or, or on the bench at big clubs. So, yeah, I, I just think there's better options there, especially considering I think he might end up being one of the more uh, hyped guys in the releases early on. So. Uh, we'll move down here to Miguel Gutierrez. He's a 20-year-old left back for Real Madrid, Spanish international. Transfer market gives him a $6 million valuation. And he had uh, two goals and eight assists in 15 matches in the La Liga second division. He has one match for Spain's U21s. Um, issue here, of course, is that he is a left back. The goal contributions look nice in La Liga um, second division, but he's already 20 years old, uh, which sounds a little bit silly to say, but I just think there's a lot better alternatives than uh, targeting a 20 uh, 20- year old left back that hasn't really um, caught on to the first team yet. So uh, I would skip out on that one. And then we'll go to Isaac Lithaji uh, for the last complete mispronunciation of this video. Uh, he's a 20 year old winger from Lille, uh, French international worth 3.5 million. According to transfer market, he had uh, one goal and three assists in 12 matches in league one. And he had one goal in two matches for the French U uh, 21 squad. Uh, there's just way too many France forward options, and I don't see how he gets a move to a big club given his current valuation and goal scoring output. So, uh, yeah, probably an easy one to avoid, at least in my opinion there. So, uh, skipping into the conclusion here, um, at this moment it appears that there are very few prospecting options uh, in this year's class. Um, there's no Fati Holland or Pedri at EME Bellingham, uh, at least not yet. We were really spoiled with the uh, last couple classes that we got for uh, UEFA um, 2020 and UEFA 2019. So at least right now, it looks like a big step back. Um, this could change if some of the unknowns or lower league players explode over the course of the season. Um, and given that, if prices stay low due to, due to the little hype on this class, there might be a good opportunity to take a flyer on some of the kids in the short term and hold to see if they pop. Um, I left my top five list here of guys I personally like, not including Gavi, of course, because that'd be too obvious. Um, I like Broby, Sesko, Sucic, um, Kjargard. Um, one of these Salzburg kids has to hit, right? And then uh, Ray Baker. Those would be uh, my five. So when we come back to this video in the future and uh, one of these five are like a top 10 player in the world, I will definitely be looking back on this. Um, and then my last recommendation here is please wait until Chrome and Sapphire come out. The paper stuff that is currently out right now is very unlikely to hold value once 20 plus sets have been released for these kids. So my recommendation would be to wait for Chrome and Sapphire, but if you can't help yourself, Chrome has shown to hold some value, but I personally would really be targeting Sapphire. So it gives you a bit of more window to uh, figure out which guys you want to look into, gives them a little bit more time to mature. And then um, by the time Sapphire comes out, you should be uh, fully ready to make those purchasing decisions. So already with that being said, uh, I thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. It's actually kind of awkward to uh, do this without having my little, um, my little uh, picture of myself up here in the top right hand corner. It's actually uh, more difficult in my opinion, but um, yeah, I, th I thank you guys for tuning in. Um, normal, video, normal video schedule should be back um, in a week or two. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll go ahead and be putting out content on a bit slower pace, but I'll try and keep some something flowing for you guys. Uh, I should have a video um, coming out over the next few days. I'm going to be filming something uh, that is a bit of a collab, so that might be something you guys might like to uh, watch. But again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.